All right, what's going on, everyone? JavaScript has a bunch of stuff in it, and you just don't know what you don't know sometimes. So let's have a little fun with it. I want to talk about my favorite global objects in JavaScript. I picked my top three. Uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. And more specifically, we'll be talking about my favorite window objects. So let's just jump straight into it, um, starting out with the console. I'm double checking something. So the console is classic right <laughs> now the console is, is helping us with everything right it's helping us test our code it's helping us um figure out if variables exist it's helping us uh you know kind of grok things out you need to master the console right there's a lot more to this than just saying console.log for example fireship.io has a wonderful course uh called that weird javascript course and they have an awesome video that teaches you basically a couple of different tricks with the console that um, may not make as much sense if you're just working on your own little solo projects, but would definitely come in handy at work and would definitely come in handy on any projects where you're collaborating. And, you know, you just need, you know, you might already have a lot of things going on in the console. Um, and you just want to basically kind of clean up the things that you can see. So that is definitely number one <laughs> best global object in javascript you're just not gonna get very far without it period point blank moving on number two i would say is um again you know a big hitter here if you're if you're using javascript it, it's damn near impossible for you to get by without using this which is why it's number two the event object this is where shit is happening in javascript period right <laughs> you have to learn how events work you have to learn um you know about bubbling all of these different things because you know this this actually becomes a, a very critical part of your developer journey um when you start getting past just making you know like basic websites with html css and javascript when you start working with frameworks libraries you know like well, I feel like React's a framework, for example, but they call themselves a UI library. You start working with things like that, you know, React, React Native, Flutter, any any type of framework or library. Even if you use something like Handlebars, um, you you always need to understand that <laughs> these libraries and packages, you know, they're just firing off different events. For example, if you're using Bootstrap and you write in a class to use like some animation or something. It's, it's probably just firing off events. So this is how you start to learn how to debug code, for example, is basically learning how to use dev tools to debug events that are happening. Um, so I would recommend, sadly, bom, 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 sadly, I'm recommending that y'all read <laughs> Mozilla's Introduction to Events. And I'm not saying that you need to understand all of this, but start to broach some of these subjects so that these things will make sense further down the line in your developer journey, right? It's not really important to comprehend all of this information. What's important is to just come in contact with it, expose yourself to it, because in the months and years down the line, this stuff will start to resonate with you, and you'll basically have a point that you can jump back in. So, you know, that's what this is all about at the end of the day is about, you know, research. You always want to have a starting point. And when you just kind of introduce yourself to these things slowly over time, you'll always have a starting point to come back and start learning more things. Now, um, this last pick um, was tough. It's a bit of a tie. Um, I actually need to uh, double check something really quick. It, it was so hard for me to pick. Uh, okay, so this this last one, this very, very last one, um, <laughs> number three, was actually a tie between local storage and uh, the location object. Um, but I feel like in everybody's developer journey, for the most part, um, everybody has used local storage at least once, right? Someone's made a to-do list or a grocery list app, some type of list app, and it's probably used local storage like right off the bat. So my number three pick is a solid, you know, local storage. The location object is also equally awesome, but local storage easily takes the cake here. I can, I'm willing to bet anyone that's getting in the code that's reached a certain point <laughs> has probably used local storage before. 
Um, now, local storage uh, is kind of confusing. I don't want to say deceptive because, you know, the specs are very clear as to what local storage is and what it isn't. But I imagine local storage originally, you know, when I was in coding boot camp, learning how to code as um, cool. I can store data, you know, in the browser. <laughs> and it's actually, you know, not as simple we can store key value pairs more specifically we can store dom strings so i think it's really important to um learn about local storage because the way that you have to deal with local storage um almost correlates with a lot of things that you'll end up doing at work right like you'll have to start kind of massaging data and you know you know you'll start to have to start considering the shape of data for example you know we have to use basically these uh, JSON functions to transform arrays and objects into DOM strings so that we can use local storage. And um, for a lot of people, when when we go through that motion, we don't actually realize like, oh my God, I'm shaping data so that I can store it. And then when I wanna retrieve that data, I actually, you know, I have to kind of like decompress it. I have to <laughs> turn it back into what it was before I put it in there. So um, at my job, uh, working as a learning assistant, I often um, send people to this this page. Uh, this is a an article by Log Rocket. It's called Local Storage in JavaScript: A Complete Guide. Pretty much covers everything you would want to know, right? If you want to know the deeper meaning behind some of these things, you can definitely get into that. If you just want to see, <laughs> you know, the literal how tos and what you need to do to get things working, it's also got that. So. Those are my top three global JavaScript objects. Um, man, I did so good. I got this done in under seven minutes. I'm really proud of myself. But let me know what um, your top three uh, global objects are, because I did skip over some cool ones like inner width, um, I think inner height, um, uh, super duper dope, you know, in terms of um, front end development. Um, I also skipped over uh, history which is, you know, basically the driving force behind a lot of stuff that we take for granted in JavaScript, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I definitely skipped over, like, some some pretty big hitters, some pretty big contenders. I would love to know um, what y'all think or if you've ever thought about this before. And if you enjoy this video and this type of content, please let me know. Thanks for watching. See you later.